Welcome everyone to the first edition of the OP Build series. We're going to be covering six builds in total, three for killers and three for survivors that are extremely powerful right now for patch 7.6.0. With the pig in line to make a pushback into the meta this patch due to her direct base kit buffs, let's set you guys up with the optimal build for the killer. Instead of running gen slowdown perks on the pig, I recommend you guys split the build in half, keeping the gen slow down and adding some anti-looping perks due to the changes to the pig's powers. For the core of the build, I recommend you guys play with Spirit's Fury and Bamboozle. I don't recommend using Enduring, as the benefit of the perk only lies if you head dive into pallets. You should instead opt it out for Bamboozle, as it will add more value by blocking windows and leaving room for more Gen Slowdown perks, which for this build will be Pop Goes the Weasel and Pain Resonance, as these are the main Gen Slowdown perks with huge progression penalties. Also, as of this new patch, the pig's ambush attack has increased attack duration, decreased hit cooldowns for both successful and missed attacks. This means that pig's main power ambush attack strengthened with add-ons like Last Will and Workshop Grease is shy from being as good as the good guy's special ability, Slice and Dice. Also, the pig's crouched movement speed has gone up as well, so she has become deadlier than ever. Keep in mind that the pig can no longer see her jigsaw boxes and the reverse bear trap timers have been increased by 30 seconds. Though the changes would seem to decrease the pig's presence in the meta, I believe her base kit buffs will make her shine through all the losses. The best add-ons for this build will be Last Will and Workshop Grease. As we continue with other killers that rely on hitting basic attacks, builds with anti-looping perks such as Enduring, Spirit's Fury, and bamboozle will pop up more frequently. And another killer who can run the same build that's definitely more underrated right now is the Clown. In this new patch, the Clown has received some love, and there were buffs made to the Clown's base kit. With strong anti-looping already built into the base kit, now the Clown spawns with six bottles instead of four, and the bottle's detonation time has been decreased to two seconds. With these changes, the Clown will be more deadly, and survivors will have fewer chances to escape from fewer favorable positions and more likely to waste more pallets. That's why if you are playing with Clown on patch 7.6.0, you should build Pop Goes the Weasel, Pain Resonance, Spirit's Fury, and Bamboozle. You can also change Bamboozle into Enduring if you are a bit more careless because of how strong Clown is at winning most tiles. A lot of players are going to be caught off guard by how hard looping you will be, so you should find yourself picking up some really free kills. The add-ons for this build will be Kerosene Can and Starling Feather. There is a new killer lurking in Dead by Daylight called the Unknown, and his potential is looking high right now as he has a ranged explosive attack and is capable of dealing with larger maps with his special teleportation ability called Hallucinations, and I am confident saying he will be super broken this patch. As for the build, your first perk should be Bamboozle. Running this perk will help you utilize your projectile ability to its maximum potential. Not only will it ensure that survivors will be forced to drop pallets, but the projectile is an AOE, meaning it has an area effect, not like the Huntress's hatchets or the Death Slinger's Redeemer where hitting targets means taking precise shots. Your second and third perks should take Pop Goes the Weasel and Grim Embrace, as these are the main gen slowdown perks right now and pair wonderfully with the Unknown's powers. With an added bonus because of Unknown's hallucinations utilizing perks like Pop Goes the Weasel and Grim Embrace is easier to use than to most killers. Lastly, the final perk is Corrupt Intervention, as this perk will make room for you to set up hallucinations and flush out some pallets during the early game. At first I thought a more aggressive anti-looping build would work better for him, but testing out the build, I found out the hybrid build with some anti-looping paired with Gen Slowdown will work wonders for your matches. The add-ons for this build will be a blurry photo and vanishing box. Survivors for the past few patches have found and tested out that the best way to play Survivor right now is by playing with anti-looping builds with the added benefit of Windows of Opportunity. If you aren't living under a rock, you will see that Windows of Opportunity is played in almost every single match right now. And fair enough, being able to see pallets and vault locations isn't only for new players because of how many different maps there are in Dead by Daylight. 
learning all of them is practically impossible. That's why running Windows of Opportunity is a must in every single build right now. And you should take this opportunity before this perk gets nerfed. As for the first OP survivor build this patch, running made for this, for the people, or buckle up, and resilience will make you a killer's worst nightmare. It's no secret. The combo of buckle up and for the people has been plaguing the dead by daylight scene for a couple of patches now because of how insanely strong it is. Honestly, this build should be played more often as when you pick up a survivor from the ground, both you and the survivor get the endurance status effect for 10 seconds. If that wasn't enough, the perk by itself is super strong, but running it with for the people lets you pick up a survivor who was downed just a moment ago. To accommodate this build's main perks, if the killer decided to go after you after you saved your teammate, made for this would activate, giving you an added 3% running speed increase, which would make you hard to catch. Running resilience alongside these perks grants an additional 9% vaulting speed, which practically makes you almost impossible to catch. The item for this build would be a flashlight as you're going to be saving your teammates and taking chases for yourself. The second survivor build that has been extremely reliant, racking up wins after wins, was the combination of off the record, windows of opportunity, lithe, and adrenaline. As mentioned before, no matter the skill level, Windows of Opportunity offers game-changing value. Not only can you see resources ahead of time, but it also allows you to plan ahead. No dead spots and empty tiles, just an overall super perk. For the exhaustion perk, I chose Leth as it is the most reliable perk out of all exhaustion perks right now. You can choose to proc it when you want, and it doesn't need additional requirements to be used. Of course, you can swap it for your favorite one. Off the Record offers you 80 seconds of endurance, your aura not shown to the killer, and your grunts of pain being silent, which is absolutely nuts. As Windows of Opportunity takes the lead survivor perk, this patch, Off the Record, is a strong second. Rounding out the build, Adrenaline takes its spot as the final perk to grant the build additional healing and speed. Not only does it accommodate off the record's flaws, it deactivates when the exit gates are activated, but if you were hooked and the last generator was completed when you were on a hook, after you get unhooked, you would be granted adrenaline's heal and the speed boost to secure the victory. So much of this build's strength comes from you being protected from the killer and all the possible dangers. The perks in the build offer you vision of resources, protection from tunneling, healing, and an on-command speed boost, so running this build is a must in patch 7.6.0. As this build is already super nasty, the item for this build is a commodious toolbox with wire spool and scraps, or a first aid kit with medical scissors and self-adherent wrap. Last but not least, the final OP build of 7.6.0. Running self-care on Survivor has been a standard pick in the past, but it's slowly getting its popularity back. Self-care in combination with botany knowledge is popping off in the Asian regions as the nature of the build offers a slower but safer approach to winning games in Dead by Daylight. And it's actually legit right now. Combined with Lithe and Windows of Opportunity, there will be opportunities popping up throughout the match for you to successfully drop off Chase and heal yourself. This build is quite strong, as you don't need to rely on your team to heal you, making it a reliable build for solo queue. And it ties in super nicely paired with the right items. Speaking of, the item is really where it all comes together, as you should be taking a first aid kit with self-adhering wrap and bandages for this build to really show its OP side. If you haven't tried this build in the new patch, you are missing out on the new OP ways to win your matches. That concludes our first edition of the OP builds for patch 7.6.0. There are many more OP builds that arrived with this new patch, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you back later.